That's a, that's a great question for the Q&A, which is about to start, but has not started yet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, well, we'll definitely keep that, that question in mind. Um, so I just wanted to uh, thank our, our presenters for their um, powerful and brave testimonies. And um, and of course, for the, for the people here, it's not just giving testimony that they're doing, they're organizing. They're in an organization of other veterans. They're carrying out uh, actions like you saw, uh, recruiting more people, reaching people in the military. Um, and so they're not just doing the brave thing of, of speaking truth to power, uh, but putting it in action and, and building uh, every single day. Um, and to be able to see uh, you know, a, a new veteran here who I hadn't met before just shows that, uh, uh, what, it, what an impact it, it actually makes uh, and what potential there is. Um, you know, I just wanted to... Uh, talk for just a minute. I mean, I, um, I'm a veteran of the Iraq War myself. I uh, was a part of the invasion in March of 2003. Um, I was there for 12 months and then became an anti-war activist uh, around the same time, same time as Ben in, in 2005. Uh, and, you know, I was, you know, with this event tonight and, you know, we were on the Blaise Bond Payne's radio show this morning. Um, I spent last night, like, trying to look up some things about Iraq, you know, because I kind of I've turned it off for, for a few months. Um, and so I was just researching, and I you know, realized that it's been over for a, a few years now. Um, and I found myself watching videos of interviews that uh, you know, the talking heads were doing during the Iraq War. Um, people in the Bush administration, uh, the neoconservatives, you know, those who were giving the talking points for the war. And you know, I didn't realize how many jokes they told in these interviews. And, uh, you know, audacity of so many of these people who were just laughing, joking about the, the chaos in Iraq in, in 2007, uh, you know, where so many people were dying and, and suffering so greatly in it. Uh, and it made, me, uh, it made me think of this uh, Dr. Martin Luther King quote about justice. And I thought about this quote about justice because... You know, I had that realization that, that the war's been over and that the history is written. President Obama gave his speech about this is what the Iraq war was all about and we ended it and it was great and everyone's a hero. Um, but we're, we see Iraq today. Uh, we see very clearly what we accomplished there. Uh, the deadliest place on earth. The worst place to have a child. Uh, the, you know, just the level of, of horror uh, it was something that was done by the United States government, it was done by that war. Uh, not to mention the massive death and destruction that took place prior. And those people, the people who lived, are still living with it today. It's not over for them. Uh, all of the orphans in Iraq, the five million orphans, uh, have grown up for a few years without their parents. Uh, the people who have lost legs have now spent years trying to learn to live without legs. Uh, the widows here of soldiers have had years to try to move on with their lives. Uh, those who are struggling like we are, those, uh, the veterans, those who came back and then tried to live a normal life and say, oh, well, that, the war was over. It's ended years ago. Uh, they're all still suffering. And, of course, uh, killing themselves at, uh, you know, what should be, shouldn't be surprising rates but, but are. Um, they're all still suffering. But, but what about the, the people I saw talking in that show, those talking heads? Um, they just you know, bought nicer cars. And now they're on the same networks talking about why we have to go to war in Syria now instead of war in Iraq. The same people. Uh, the generals that sent us on these completely pointless missions that got us killed. The generals who said it was all right to bomb this area knowing that tons of civilians will be killed. What are they doing? Uh, well, they retired from the military. They got a sweet pension from the military. And the day they retired, they put on a suit and started collecting a salary uh, from the defense contractor that they were friends with uh, before they retired. And they're making six-figure salaries or more sitting on some board of directors. And what about the politicians? The president, the secretary of state, the secretary of defense, every single person in that administration, with just this war in particular, that lied, that knowingly lied to us, that made us believe something and then sent us to our deaths, set us to hurt other people, what are they doing? 
They're writing books and going on book tours and making millions of dollars. Uh, George W. Bush's honorarium for speaking for 20 minutes is $150,000. Uh, that's how much he makes for, for speaking somewhere. So that's what they're doing. So the, the quote from Don Martha, Martin Luther King that he gave towards the end of his life uh, was that we need to redistribute the wealth in this country, which is a great quote, but that was only the first part of it. He said, we have to redistribute the wealth, but we also have to redistribute the pain. And what seems like an unusual quote from Dr. King, but what he meant was that the consequences of the decisions that the rich make in this country who have power, the consequences and the misery and the pain is borne by us only, by the poor, by working class people, by people in the military, by people in the countries that the military is sent to. We bear all the pain of it. And those who are responsible have borne none of it. And so when you talk about justice for those who have suffered, which we're fighting for, justice also means punishing those people who are responsible. And that's also what we're fighting for.